Appendix A, Section 2. There are two big perils in the strategy I have just outlined. The first, please be careful with your arrangements. Recently, I heard George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue arranged as a 70s style rock funk piece, complete with wah wah guitars. Think Rhapsody in Blue meeting Jimi Hendrix and the theme from Superfly, and you'll have the idea. I thought it was well done, with tremendous energy and humor. But I guarantee you that if I had heard the tune of Sometimes I Feel Like a Motherless Child or Amazing Grace treated the same way, I would not have had so favorable a reaction. I am not saying to sacrifice what makes your sound special to your fans and supporters. I am saying you will need to strike a careful balance between old and new elements when you use works from the public domain. The need to be sensitive to your audiences is never more critical than when you are working with public domain music. It is possible it to cause fury in every niche market your project hits if you are not careful. If you find something you want to use for yourself in an area or genre of music with which you are completely unfamiliar, it would be wise for you to get together with musicians and community members who are familiar and ask to gain better understanding. If you cannot achieve that, head for other parts of the library and see if you can find some history on the peoples, the situations, and the needs and wants of the composer or community from which your selected piece comes. The second thing you must do, and it's a very major peril, please remember, give credit where credit is due. Failure in this area will sink you sooner or later. When you use public domain music, you must give proper credit to the composer and the community from which that music came when you go public with your album or project. Let me repeat that. You must give credit. Now. No law binds you to give proper credit to those who have no ability to enforce their copyrights. Hundreds of people have gotten away with the outright theft of other people's ideas before. On the other hand, there was also no civil law once upon a time against evil child labor practices or against the kidnapping and enslavement of folks from the continent of Africa. And... Some music companies still think it's just fine to rip off artists in the music industry. Figure out what side of history you want to be on before you start using public domain music. Paul Robeson, the great African-American singer, thinker, and actor, said it so elegantly that I have also used it as this book's closing thought. You will hear it as the last word from me. Quote, the artist must elect whether he will fight for freedom or for slavery. When you use public domain music, bear in mind that just that choice quoted is before you, though you are on a smaller scale. As a purely business matter, the more composers, families, and communities you enrage, the smaller your sales base will become. You can't afford to shrink your sales base because there is too much competition out there. You will also make enemies out of knowledgeable people who can help you on your way. Good opportunities will start to pass you by because no one likes a thief but a bigger thief who hopes to steal with and from the smaller thief. On the flip side, it can only help you to acknowledge where you find inspiration and material. You will become known as a person of gratitude and good taste, and your integrity will win you respect from many corners. 
Opportunities will flow from all such corners, opportunities you can be proud of exploring. And should the day come when someone tries to steal music from you without giving you compensation or proper credit, you'll be doubly glad to know chickens aren't coming home to roost and that your many, many allies from communities you honored are ready and willing to help you. So, let's run through this again. When using public domain works, you must give credit to the composer and or the community from which the music came. No 